Okay, first step is to get the old nut out. It's not a pretty thing. It's got to go. You got the new bone blank cut to uh, thickness. Now he's uh, transferring the radius uh, of the fretboard to the blank and setting his preferred height. Now he's got the curve roughed in. It's still uh, not the final width or anything, and it's not slotted yet. The new uh, bone nut compared to the old new bone nut. And the new bone nut it's all slotted and prettied and polished, polished frets. And he's got some white lithium grease there on the uh, truss rod nut to keep things nice and smooth for a long time. In the first uh, couple of videos on this SG, I mentioned that I did not have a problem with the Clusen style tuners that were on it. that say Gibson Deluxe. And a lot of people automatically think that those are bad tuners. And they usually aren't. These are the ones I put on my 2000, or actually 99, uh, Southern Jumbo. And in 2000, I replaced the uh, little white button tuners with these that say Gibson Deluxe. And I don't know if these are made by Clusen or Godot or whoever was making them in 2000, but these tuners have been great. They have the proper post height. Um, they don't slip. Uh, they turn evenly. They only got like a 14 to 1 or 15 to 1 ratio, but that's always been fine. I have a well cut bone, bone nut, have the proper amount of wraps, as few as you can get away with, and these have been great for 20 years on this guitar. So I was not inclined to dislike the tuners in the SG automatically. However, the tuners that they actually use on this SG which still say Gibson Deluxe, are really terrible quality copies of a Clusen. They're made by Ping, and there's nothing inherently wrong with something being made in China, as long as it's being made to the right spec. But these are really cheap and not fun to use. Um, the key on the shaft sometimes turns a little bit before the shaft even turns, and it has very uneven pressure. It takes a lot of pressure to move it past here. It doesn't want to turn, then it turns, and then it gets sloppy and turns real easy and has jumps and goes back and forth without actually transferring that movement into rotation on this. Um, so between that and the very large holes in there, you get these big, uh, you turn, nothing happens, turn, nothing happens, and all of a sudden everything happens. They have a very low ratio. I think they're nominally 14 to 1, and if this were turning evenly, maybe they would be. Um, it also has a very large hole in the shaft for the string to go through in the post, which means that if the string is still on the line of this hole, once it gets to here, it has a ping, and then, you know, no, no, no pun intended, when it hits that uh, gap, and all of a sudden you have a range of nothing happening until the next edge of that hole catches it. So if the strings are not low enough to be below that hole, that hole throws everything off. And if you have enough wraps to, to get the uh, string beneath that hole so that no longer becomes an issue, then you've got a lot of wraps on there and that can introduce its own tuning instabilities. If you look at the uh, old Gibson Deluxes on my acoustic from earlier, you'll notice that um, there's only two wraps on the wound strings and uh, only as many wraps as are necessary on the plain strings. So I have taken these off aside from one and uh, I've put on these Clusen Revolution tuners. Now these are locking. They also sell a non-locking version and I'll discuss why I went with the locking in a moment. Um, these have a 19 to 1 ratio they turn very smoothly in both directions. There's no unevenness. You can adjust the tension if you want. Um, they weigh, I think, six grams more than the stock. So by putting six of these on the guitar, you're adding about one ounce to the total weight at the headstock, which is pretty much imperceptible. Um, 
these have been fantastic. Now, I was a little bit worried about getting these cosmetically because in all the photos on Clusen's website, the button looks very white and very perloid and exaggeratedly see-through. But um, in reality, it's a fairly close match to what Gibson ships this slightly ambered green that everyone knows and loves. It's not as green as the ones on the Les Paul Classics from the 90s. It's not that snot green, but it's fairly close. Yeah, you can see the hole through it the, for, the, for the screw. No big deal. If I really, really cared, I could probably uh, slightly rough these up, hit them with a little bit of brown kiwi and wipe it off, and voila, I don't care about that. Um, these are nickel. And let me uh, show you how they do on the actual guitar. All right, on the actual guitar, these fit the exact uh, 10, millimeter, 10 millimeter holes that were already in the peg head. Um, so there's no adaptation. They also sell a version um, that without the collar up top that replaces the older Clusen style. Um, from the front, they look very vintage correct. You'd have to really be looking closely to see what someone has. Um, they're very solid because these are the lockings. They don't even get a full wrap, so there's a lot less slop here. There's less chance for things to lose their tuning capability. Has a nice behind the nut angle. And uh, I left this one on for the sake of this video because when I was looking online, I could not see any photos that showed the the post height compared to the stock on these. And the stock on these is much taller than what you get on a vintage one. Or like the reproductions on the 335s I have here or that uh, acoustic. So th this post height is much more like on the old ones. And here's the post height on the stock ping tuner, which is much higher. And so I wanted to show this comparison. Now, like I said, you can get this in the non-locking version, and then it's still a 19 to 1 ratio. And I think the post height is the same. Uh, but with this SG and the way the ball ends attach at the bridge, this made a lot of sense for me, and I'll show you why. I went with the locking tuners on this guitar, not just because the string locking is nice and you have fewer wraps, so that is part of it, but mainly because on the stock SG with the Maestro, uh, it's tricky to string uh, the traditional way with wraps because you pass the ball into the string through the, these slots, then you pull the string through the center of the post, and then you pull back the string uh, to give you enough wraps around the post. And I, on this stock tuner, you end up being almost a a fret and a half on the on the low wound strings. Um, so as soon as you pull this back, the string wants to come out of here. So stringing that was a little bit tricky. You needed three hands. Uh, with this, I can pass the string through the post with this unlocked, put the ball end down at the other end, pull this tight, tighten this up, and I'm ready to tune. I don't have to fight uh, holding the ball end down at the bridge where it connects. I can just focus it all at one end. So that's my third hand. Uh, it does have the benefit of fewer wraps, so there are fewer things to go uh, to where you have points of friction where you can lose tuning. But, um, you know, if you don't have the... It's my dog drinking water in the background. If you don't have the Maestro and you have a stop bar, you don't have to go with the, uh, the locking. It's like $20, $30 less for the non-locking version of these, in which case you still have the better post height, the smaller post hole, the 19 to 1 tuning ratio, and the even tuning, even turning uh, keys. So I do think that uh, the Clusen Revolutions are much better than the Gibson Deluxes that these are shipping with. And that's a shame because the Gibson Deluxes of 20 years ago, like on my acoustic, I would not have felt the need to change. It would have been a little trickier to str string because of the maestro, but hey, all of them would have been back in the day. Uh, but they went really cheap on these tuners, which is sad for a $2,000 guitar.